In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a simple scalloped border to your crochet projects. All you need is the yarn of your choice, the corresponding crochet hook size, a scissor, and a yarn needle. This is the, um, the example I used from our last crochet video on how to create a, um, actually our second to last video, and how to create a ribbing effect. Um, I've actually been using this as a coaster, so that's another idea. If you want to crochet a square or rectangle, you could make a little coaster. But the first step to creating this border is to create a single crochet around your entire piece. So if you had a blanket or something like that, you would do the single crochet around your entire project. If you had a scarf or something, you could do the same and then only do the border at the two ends of the scarf. But for this video, I will do the border around the entire project. So to begin, um, I'm going to attach another piece of yarn to my project. I'm using a different color so that it's easier for you to follow along. But you, of course, can use the same color uh, you've been using for your project. So what I'm going to start by doing is creating a slip knot. You can attach at any point, but I'm just going to pick a stitch at the top here to insert my hook into. So I'll just use this one and just stick my hook through the top and you should have the two pieces of yarn there. And I'll grab my loop and um, pull so that it's secure on the hook and just bring it up. And what I'll do is do a, I'll just bring up another loop there. Now for this, um, doing this border, all you need to know how to do is a single crochet and a double crochet and um, I'll show you in this video but I'll also link our previous tutorial videos on how to do those. So now what I'm going to do is go into each stitch and create or do the single crochet stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook, pull up, and pull through two. And I'm going to Keep doing that all the way around. So now I'm almost at the end of the row here. So this would be the second to last stitch in the row. So I'll insert here the same way. But when you get to the corners, of your project, what you're going to want to do is do your single crochet three times in the same corner. So I'm going to insert in the corner here and do a single crochet once and back in again twice and one more time to make three times. And that just allows um, the border to easily go around the corner so it is not bunching and tight. Um, I usually do three, sometimes you might need four, but three seems to typically work for me. Now I started at the top where you could see the stitches clearly, but now we're getting to the side of the project where these are the ends of the rows we created. So when we get to this side, we, we don't have clear um, areas where we can insert our hook. So we're just going to kind of go in wherever we can. Uh, so I'm going to start here. And just try to keep the spacing similar to how it was at the top here. And you'll notice if you make a mistake, if... Um, if your spacing is too um, loose, 
you'll see gaps in your border. If it's too tight, you'll see that your, your project starts to bunch. And sometimes it's a little tricky to go through. But we're just eyeballing it here. What I like to do when I'm working on this side of my project is I just like to stop and take a look and see. It doesn't need to be perfect, but I want them close enough. So now we're at the um, second or second corner, and we're going to do the same thing where we insert and do our single crochet three times in the same section so that it can go around the corner. Like so. And now we're going to repeat. So here it's going to be a bit easier because we can clearly see our, our stitches and we'll just insert And continue and I'll meet back when the uh, when I get up to here and then I'll show you how to finish it off from where you started and then how to begin your scalloped border now we're almost done with our border I've done our three single crochets in our fourth corner and I'm going to continue single crocheting these last few stitches and when I get to where we began our border I'm going to do another single crochet in there and now we're going to do a slip stitch um, where we began so we're going to insert under this white yarn where we created our border just like you would insert to do a single crochet. We're going to yarn over, pull through, just like you would do a single crochet, but instead of yarning over and pulling through both loops, you're just going to pull this front loop through the back one straight through. And that is called a slip stitch. And your border is your initial border is done. This you could use as a border, just a simple border on your projects, but now we're going to move into doing the scalloped border. To do the scalloped border, we're going to work in clusters of double crochets. So to do a double crochet, you yarn over and we're going to insert into this next stitch from our border. Yarn over again, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. And we're going to do that four more times. So we're going to work in clusters of five. So that was our first double crochet. Now we're doing our second one, all in the same stitch. Our third one, fourth one, and one last one. As you can see, that creates this little scallop shape. Now we're going to do a slip stitch. So we're going to skip the next stitch and work into the second one from where we created our scallop. Insert our hook, yarn over and pull through, and then pull this piece of yarn through the back one. And then 
we will begin again in the next stitch working five double crochets as you can see we're getting a nice little scalloped shape here so we're going to skip one go into the second from there to do our slip stitch and we will continue this all the way around if you find that this is stretching out your project too much maybe you skip two stitches before you do your slip stitch um, to space out the scallops a bit more when you get to the corners of your project you have the option to do the same thing which is to skip one stitch and work your slip stitch and then start your scallop of double crochet clusters which is what I'm going to do um, but if for whatever reason maybe you didn't start where I started maybe you started at the end and you want the scallop to be right on the corner you can adjust so maybe you skip two stitches before you do your slip stitch or maybe you don't skip a stitch that time it's up to you to decide how you want your scallops to fall on your particular project and we're just going to do this all the way around our project until we get back to where we began so now i've got one last scallop to do um, i've done my second to last one here i'm going to skip this stitch and work my slip stitch into the corner here and now i'm going to instead of doing the um, double crochet clusters for the scallop right here i'm going to skip one more and do it here just so it's a bit closer to the last or our first scallop that we made on our border and now we're going to join our final um, scallop with our first one with a slip stitch so we're going to insert right at the base of where our first scallop began it's going to be a little tough and yarn over pull through just like we did to end our initial border and pull through one last time and what I'm gonna do is yarn over and pull up a loop as well kind of tighten that down and we're gonna cut this and sew in our ends so I've cut this here and you should have two tails the tail from where we began making our initial border and this tail where we just cut off and ended our scalloped border. Um, yours might land in a different spot, but what I'm going to do is insert my hook from the back here and pull this, this tail through to the back because I want the tail to be low when I sew it in as opposed to being on top. And we do have a video, a tutorial video showing how we sew in our ends for a project. Um, so I won't go into detail here and I will link that video in the description as well. But you just want to make sure if you did what I did, which was use a different color border than your project, that you sew in your ends in the same color so I'm not going to sew in my ends down here where the yellow is I'm going to sew in my ends up here along the white so it blends in so this is a really lovely stitch that adds a beautiful touch to your projects and you only need to know how to do a single crochet and a double crochet